Mike McCool here with the Royal Examiner and today I'm standing over at Fantasyland and with me is Greg Butler. Greg is part of the Warren County Income Amateur Radio Group. Is that, yes. is that enough to say? Yes, um, we are a group of amateur radio operators who have volunteered our expertise and our time uh, to serve the County of Warren and the Town of Front Royal in time of public need. Right. Now today if you're driving by on Commerce Avenue you'll see all these antennas setting up here at the park and today is a kind of a national day of radio amateurs or yeah. something like that. What do you call it? So it's a nationwide event called Amateur Radio Field Day. It's every year the fourth full weekend in June and the idea is to set up in a public space so we can show the community what we can do. Uh, we're kind of in austere conditions in the fact that we have no commercial power here. Right. Um, we're operating entirely off of the batteries that are supplied by this deuce and a half sitting there. Right, there. right. And so we're using this to power all of our radios today. And our operators are attempting to contact stations all over the country and even outside the country. I think the gentleman sitting to my right here was uh, just trying to make contact with Puerto Rico just a few right, minutes ago. Right. Well, I, I got some of your propaganda here. Okay, that's but, great. You know, people don't really realize um, you know, we're so used to our cell phones and commercial television to get Fox News and CNN show up at the, a disaster, but um, really it's the amateur radio that has really kept our communications held together in times of disasters, and at least initially until things get turned back on, is that right? Yes, you know, technology has really changed the way we, we communicate in this country. And with the advances in telecommunications, there are a lot of fancy things that we can do. But all those fancy things can break down in a disaster. You know, we can have communications towers get blown over by ice storms and things like that. The nice part about amateur radio is we aren't necessarily dependent on that infrastructure. And so we can set up almost anywhere in a real short period of time with a portable radio, battery or generator, get an antenna up in the air and we can be on the air in 25 minutes. All right, all right. Do we still use Morse code for anything? We do. It's not required for any of the licenses that the FCC issues, uh, but there are guys who still use it. It's very good in its use of radio spectrum in the sense that it's really efficient. Right. And in terrible conditions, it, you can it, still understand Morse it, code. It punches its way through yeah, there, doesn't it? Even yeah. if you can't understand what somebody's saying over the radio, you can usually still understand the Morse code. Right, right. I can remember years ago when I was interested in amateur radio, you had to be able to send, I think, 15 words or something like that. I did have to years yeah, ago years I had ago. to pass a Morse code test to get my license. They've done away with that requirement. Right, right. Some of the old timers aren't very happy about that, but right, it's opened right. up the hobby to a lot more people. It did, it did. And there and, was and then we got the two meter. Uh, yes. The FM two meter. That really enhanced the uh, quality of the audio going out, didn't it? It did, because it's FM quality, it's it's not like AM with all the noise associated with it. Um, we have repeaters usually are located on high locations so they have good coverage for sure, their antenna. Sure. So you can take a fairly low powered radio, talk through that repeater and have a pretty big footprint of where your signal is. Right. It's kind of like a cell phone before cell phones came out. I mean that's kind of what it was. I remember guys in their cars talking literally across the country on two meter, you know. Yes, if you have linked repeaters you yep. could go all the way across yeah, the country. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, yes, and guys still do use Morse code but some of the other things that technology has brought in is we use the computers a lot on the amateur right. radio as well. We can actually send email via amateur radio and it's completely independent of the internet. So there's a lot of different things that we can do. Our hope with this group is that we can serve the community someday should they need us. We kind of hope they don't, sure. but we want to be prepared. And so that's why we're out here today to be able to show the community, one, that we exist, and two, that we are ready to serve the community anywhere yeah. we can. You can have all the best technology, but if you don't know how to use it or if, it, or if you turn it on and it doesn't work, uh, you can't go out and get it fixed uh, on, when the emergency's there. you got to be prepared. That's right, and so that's why we practice. We have a, a weekly practice that we do for uh, VoiceNet, and mm -hmm. there's also a weekly practice that we do for some of the digital stuff we do with the computers. And so we try to stay in practice so that the time the county calls us, we can go over there, get set up right away, and be helpful. Now, if someone's interested in amateur radio, how do they get hold of you? Well, they could contact me a couple of ways. Number one, we have a Facebook. CQ, uh, CQ, CQ. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they catch me on the right frequency on the radio at the right time. We have a Facebook page called Warren County MCOM. Um, you can also contact me via email. Okay. I have an email address that is kw6gb at arrl.net right. and that will come to my regular commercial email address. If somebody's interested, they can contact me. I'll help them 
get what they need to get their license. And then uh, if they're interested in emergency communications and serving the community, we would be happy to enfold them into our group. Well, that's good. How many people do you have in the group? We've got about 17 on our roster right now. Um, we don't have all 17 here today. Schedules are what schedules are. And so right. the folks that were available showed up and can help us. We're hopeful with a group of 17 that, you know, if a two o'clock in the morning emergency happens and the county wakes me up, Hopefully I can rouse at least four or five people to help us out. All right, they might have to come banging on your door. If they... Well, they do know where I live, so I suppose <laughs> if all communications are lost, they could come wake me up that way. Well, I see, too, you've got a few ages. I've seen some young people here and some people more my age and your age and a little older, maybe. So it's open to really all ages, isn't it? It is. Um, you know, it's some people would think it's an old man's hobby, but because of the advent of some of the newer technologies and the use of computers, uh, that's an attraction for a younger generation. Sure. Uh, we have a, there's a club that I help out with at Randolph Macon Academy. Uh, one of their graduating seniors this year was member of the club, an amateur radio operator, and uh, he got into the Air Force Academy. I'm hopeful that having an amateur radio license was one of those things that made him stand out from right. maybe some of the other candidates. Right, it is. You know, that's one little more feather in your cap sometimes. Well, and, it, and it's a good hobby, but it also, because it's got so much, uh, you know, the, the focus on STEM these days. Right. Science, uh, the technology side of it. Uh, a lot of people who get into amateur radio end up find themselves in an am in a in an engineering type career. Right. So there's lots of possibilities. So it's not only a fun hobby and it can serve the community, but it could serve you in your career somewhere. Right. That's true. When you mentioned we had some older guys, but most of these older guys started this out when they were younger guys. Well, that's true. They've been in it a that's long true. time. I see someone over here laughing at us over here yeah, now. Well. So we, we won't turn the camera on him and embarrass him, but. I think it looks like he's been around the block a few times. Well, most of us have been around the block a few times, I think. But, you know, one of the challenges with the younger generation is everybody's got a cell phone and they think everything's great until the day it doesn't work. I can remember 9-11. I was trying to get on the Internet to look at what was going on. And it couldn't. It was, it was down. It was crazy. There was so many people on it. And I know that day was a day that uh, and when the air traffic stops, uh, communication stops, cell phones stopped. And just because there's so many people doing it. And this is where radio comes in. And, and we're hopeful that, you know, in a way, we're hopeful that we never have to do that here right. in Warren County. But we want to be ready in case it is needed. Uh, back in February, there was a big ice storm that broke uh, an antenna that the county had up on a mountaintop here. We didn't actually go in and provide any communications for them, but we provided some technology and some expertise to help them use some of their equipment and some of our equipment and kind of cobble together some things that helped them communicate until they could get that antenna repaired. Well, communication is the key now. I think we're so used to it. We really, we depend on it so much. Our whole world revolves around technology and communications. You're right. We want to be able to communicate right now. That's right. Yeah, not tomorrow. Today. No. That's right. Yeah, gone are the days when if you miss me on the telephone, maybe I'll call you when I get home. You want to be able to get pull over and talk to me on the side of the road. Oh, I, I can remember. We were talking about that the other day about used to go to the hotels and the conventions and pay phones, you know, a mile long. You stood in line for an hour to be able to use the one of the 50 pay phones on the wall. And you go to the hotel now, those walls are like, have pictures hanging on them. Yeah, good luck finding a pay phone. <laughs> yeah, today, there's right? no such thing. Yeah. Everyone's got a cell phone. So. Sure. But we do appreciate, you know, people like you that, community, that uh, volunteer in our community and do these things, uh, just more than just amateur radio. But uh, it's a great, it's a great work. Get involved in something if you have any interest at all in doing something. Uh, there's just hundreds of things you can get involved with as far as community service. Sure. And amateur radio is one of them. One of them. And I'll put yeah. your link in the story where people can go to your Facebook page, find out more about that. Thanks very we much. Contact you, and, great. And, and hopefully we can get that up to 21 or 27. Yeah, yeah we'll have, we go. If more anybody, the if, if anybody's interested, we'll help them. I appreciate that, all Greg. Right. Thank you. Thank Thanks you so Mike. much. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm.